And I got into it because I wanted to know if I could get to that finish line, if I could get through the challenge of it. So it was purely the unknown, the, the challenge, what would happen when things start to get tough and I have to work out how I continue going. Uh, and that has persisted. That's been uh, one of the great benefits all the way through, especially with the Arctic and subarctic races, um, where it can be quite dangerous. Um, and you have to make decisions quite quickly. You need to be very efficient. You need to plan things in advance because it might be minus 50. Uh, and if you don't know what you're doing or you make a mistake, it could be very costly. You could have a lot of work to do just to preserve your health, uh, let alone to keep going in the race. Um, so I love that. I love the challenge of uh, finding out if I can finish. Um, I love the problem solving in terms of when things start to get tough, how do I uh, adapt my thinking or adjust what I'm doing to be able to keep going. Uh, and in that, you see, it's a wonderful journey of the mind. Um, just what's it going to throw at me? What are the challenges that are going to arise? And how am I going to get, get through those? And that's a really satisfying, empowering thing um, to be able to do. And then add to that that I do these races in sort of extreme environments, deserts, jungles, mountain regions, the Arctic, and they're uh, beautiful. And I got into Ultron, it's a great way of exploring those areas uh, around my work. So you can cover like 450 miles in the Arctic on a holiday from work, because it's all done within two weeks and you're back home. So how do you overcome challenges? If you're not, have you ever hit that wall in a race? Um, so some people, uh, very sensitive individuals, and what these individuals will do, and I count myself as one of them, is that they're aware when things start to niggle, and they're aware of problems when they very first appear, and because of that, they respond to them. So they might adapt how they run, or or they'll stop and they'll do some mobility movements, or they'll there is a blister or a hot spot on their foot, something like that, and they'll deal with it very early on. Um, and those people tend to manage themselves quite effectively to the end. Uh, it's the people who lack the sensitivity or are really good at ignoring it, who just sort of blunder through, aware that they're in pain, but just think, it's just pain, I'll get to the end. Uh, those are the ones who usually get the more serious injuries, whether it's in training or during a race, and who have the shorter running careers. Um, so there's a lot to be said for being sensitive of pain, uh, and not ignoring it, but dealing with it. Uh, and there, was a, there was a study uh, some years ago looking at finishes versus non-finishes and things like how much discomfort there was, how much pain there was, um, number of blisters, number of injuries, the amount of vomiting, all of these things that were going on. And it was the people who were finishing who were having the most, they were having the worst time. They were far more likely to be throwing up getting blisters, getting injuries, and getting to the finish than people who pulled out. So the issue was that those people who pulled out, they perceived their pain and discomfort as far worse than those who just dealt with it and managed themselves through, uh, which is sort of another side of it. Um, but yeah, it, if you pull out and you say that it hurt, uh, I felt sick or I was sick, it's like, well, the chances are the people who finished went through that exact same experience. Um, the, the only real difference, the only measurable difference is how much people are willing to put up with that, put up with the discomfort to get through. Your best run, where and why? Uh, I actually reflect on the, the best run that I've done. Uh, I, I think that it's, it is difficult. I was on a superb run like six weeks ago in the south of France on trails that I'd never known existed. I wasn't using maps, I was um, uh, navigating using the sun and um, just, just in an area that I didn't know existed. And that was really beautiful and technical ground, working really hard, loved it. But I think a better run I did was actually a training run for La Ultra. So, La Ultra is on one of the world's highest motorable mountain passes. It's the highest altitude ultra marathon. Um, and it was 135 miles as a continuous run. Um, 
and uh, a few days before I did a training run uh, where I went out with my support crew and we were sort of doing rehearsals. So uh, I needed to improve my fitness for so running at that altitude and we also needed to improve the discipline of the group so that they knew when I wanted food and water and how we managed that sort of time and distance wise and just to get some fluidity uh, in the team um, because it is a team. Do a supportive race and get through it by yourself. You get through because of the work of the support group. So we all went out together, um, and they had their vehicle, uh, and I was running along. And we started at just over 3,000 meters, and we went up to uh, somewhere between four, four and a half thousand meters. Um, and uh, I just remember we were doing it in stages, sort of 45 minutes worth of running roughly before I'd have a rest. And I was having a lot of rest because that was the idea. I wanted to make sure I was fully recovered before going on. Um, so I'd stop for 10 minutes, then 15, and eventually sort of 20 minute rests. Um, but as I was going higher up, uh, although I felt recovered uh, in my mind, uh, the reality was there just wasn't that much oxygen going around. So it was becoming more and more difficult to run uh, until it was more of a shuffling sort of pace uh, and uh, eventually one of the one of the team got out to go with me to the, to the next stopping point uh, and I was walking uh, and although uh, we were having a good laugh at the time uh, we might have been doing some singing some people accused us of doing a bit of a dance which I don't really remember so I'm sure it never happened um, but we could walk, or I could walk, I couldn't run anymore. I just, there was just not enough oxygen getting into my legs to allow that to happen. Um, and that was the thing, you could get out of the car at 5,000 meters and you could run. But when you were having to run for a, a long period of time, it didn't matter if you were at 3,000, 4,000 or 5,000. After a certain amount of time, it became really challenging. Um, and I remember getting to the support vehicle at the point where we were stopping. And uh, I actually had to have a bit of a moment against the side of the uh, van and sort of wept a little bit because I've never worked that hard in my life. And we'd only been out for sort of a few hours, um, but it was so hard just to move uh, that the whole thing was quite overwhelming. So I really had to work hard to do that. But at the same time, having to work that hard just to keep moving was a really satisfying thing to have done. And so I was kind of elated and happy and overwhelmed. And, yeah, I had an emotional moment, uh, which was over before any of the crew could detect it was happening. <laughs> but I'd say that was my best run, just because it was, it was everything. It was just really, really tough, and at the same time, so satisfying. But it was a training run. <laughs>